Hey everybody, this is for the 11th graders who are doing uh, the section on um, the Grapes of Wrath. This is for the first unit um, in Language Arts B1 that um, is called Unit 1 Modernism and Language. So in that one, you're doing a little bit of work on the Grapes of Wrath, and I'm going to help you with that first uh, quiz there uh, with some, uh, to help you kind of understand um, a little bit about the Grapes of Wrath and some of the stuff that the quiz is asking you to do. So I'm going to do, define some words which hopefully will help you. Um, you might see the word intercalary chapter a few times and be confused by what that means. This is my face mask that Rhonda made for me. See how pretty it is? So pretty. See? Mm, so pretty. But anyway, I don't need it right now. So in the Grapes of Wrath, there is a lot of symbolism. And in the unit, um, the one of the um, presenters talks about symbolism, and she mentions how symbolism is not where there aren't there's not an obvious representation of a, a comparison between two things like in similes and metaphors. You know how similes and metaphors are comparing things and similes are using like or as and metaphors aren't. Um, with symbolism, um, the reader has to do some work to figure out what a thing symbolizes. He has to think for himself. Um, so that's symbolism. Um, oh, and intercalary chapters. Inter the word intercalary means within the calendar, but when you're talking about literature, intercalary, an intercalary chapter is a chapter where um, something happens that doesn't, it lends to the theme of the story. Oh, here's a definition right here that I wrote on the board. So it lends to the theme of the story, but it doesn't move the plot forward. And Steinbeck did that a lot in The Grapes of Wrath because he wanted to emphasize the theme um, of his story uh, a lot. Um, um, parallelism is where you use, where a writer uses a similar um, style within like the, the same sentence um, to emphasize an idea. So similar word patterns, I should say. Like here's an example of parallelism. So uh, right here, the grass was green, the flowers were bright, the sky was blue. You can see parallel parallelism there. There's a similar word structure throughout emphasizing the idea that it's a nice day. Um, also, subject and object. Want to make sure that you know what those are. So, subject is the person or thing. Sorry, the person or thing doing the action of the sentence, or it, per, per, people, possibly, or things. Uh, if there's more than one subject, one person or thing that's the subject. So, the subject is a person or thing doing the action. The object is the person or people or thing, or things, having the action done to them. Sorry, this is dripping. So subject is a person or thing doing the action, object, person, or thing having it happen. Um, in our standard structure, syntax, or sentence structure in English, we um, tend to have a subject first, which then does a verb, and then an object. For example, I went to the store. I meaning me, Miss Evans, went, verb, to the store, object. That's where I went. Um, but authors sometimes switch, uh, still being grammatically correct, they switch the standard syntax around for emphasis or to get a point. Like, in a hole in the ground there lived a hobbit. Instead of saying a hobbit lived in a hole in the ground, they switch that around, uh, Tolkien switched that around um, for, uh, to, to 
for, for dramatic emphasis to begin that very first sentence of The Hobbit. Um, so also in the Great Depression, um, farmers were kicked off of their land. The, in the Dust Bowl, the, the, um, the Grapes of Wrath are, fo is, a, is, is focused on the, the Dust Bowl and a family that's struggling because of that. So anyway, in the Grapes, grapes of Wrath and in, in the Great Depression in the Dust Bowl, when uh, farmers started losing their land, the banks would come in, the government would come in and take their land. Um, World, World War II um, helped to bring about the, the end of the Great Depression and bring back economic stability to the country and the world. And, um, and John Steinbeck, he um, wrote for a paper in San Francisco and he wrote about migrant workers and he used the, inf the, the stuff that he learned from that in, in his, um, to, to write The Grapes of Wrath. And The Grapes of Wrath, the title for that uh, came, he got that idea from um, a, uh, from the Bible where it mentions that, um, I forget exactly how the verse goes, but it says that um, God would, uh, he, the, Let's see. Anyway, he he um, is going to um, you with his wrath. He's going to crush um, and mash all of the the wine press, and so um, that verse in from the Bible doesn't actually speak about grapes. But you can, t you can tell from the verse that it's speaking about um, uh, crushing grapes in, uh, because of God's wrath. Um, and that's where the title came from. Um, and hopefully that helps you with that first quiz in Unit 1, uh, you 11th graders. And that's, that's the end of that, um, that quiz.